So first of all, I would like to deeply thank the, these families because of the generous financial support of this project and all this memorial grant of Ernie Dower, Robert Esposito, Jeffrey Smith, Marcia Slivery, and the Stride for CJD Grant. As you know, uh, as John Collins showed previously, uh, PRP mutation generate different uh, uh, disorders uh, and uh, which correlate with specific mutation. We have genetic CJD, fatal familial insomnia, germline strasser, and uh, PRP systemic amyloidosis. E200K mutation uh, correlate to uh, genetic Reutherian-Jakob disease and is characterized by a rapidly progressive neurological disorder. It is the most diffuse worldwide mutation we cluster in Slovakia, in Italy, which is the one that I'm going to present here, Libyan Jewish, uh, with a variable penetrance of the mutation. That means that not all the patients carry the mutation might develop the disease. And specifically, the risk to develop the disease in the Italian family is 50% at the age of 60 and 61 at the age of 70. This stand has been done long ago by Maurizio Pocheri at the Instituto Superior di Sanità. As you can see, this is a very simple cartoon. We showed that patients which carry the mutation have a mutated protein, and this protein, along with the time, convert into a pathological form which bind to other PRPM molecule propagating the disease. And, uh, as you can see, the preclinical stage of the disease is pretty long because it might last even 30, 60 years. Why the clinical overt, when, the, when we have the brain accumulation of the PRPSC, is just a few months of, uh, of duration. So the point is that we have to, have to focus on this period of time to block at least the conversion from the mutated protein into an altered form and then along to the propagation. So we decided to do, use the olfactory brushing in a patient which are in this period of, uh, of time, which is uh, patients who carry the mutation who are not symptomatic. So with the question is uh, whether Artiquic on the olfactory brushing might be positive, what to do? So, the indication that uh, uh, the brain is damaged by prion in uh, a preclinical time is shown in this study done by Bologna's group in the FFI. And you can see 13 months before the clinical onset, uh, the thalamus, which is the brain region which is more affected, uh, show a damage. And uh, after the clinical onset, you see the thalamus which is completely damaged, indicating that uh, there is a period of time where there is a brain damage without the clinical symptoms. So in 2014, with uh, Byron Cowie, we published this paper on uh, using this technique, which is Artiquic, uh, that is able to amplify single molecules of PRP in different tissue, including olfactory mucosa. And we show that uh, by collecting the olfactory mucosa and the cerebrospinal fluid in the same patient, the seeding activity, which is the amount of prion which is present in this tissue, is at least 1,000 times higher compared to the CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid. So you can see an example of this Artiquic assay in olfactory brushing of patients with sporadic CJD and E200K. You see that after 10 hours reaction, this is the E200K and this is sporadic CJD, we have a kind of plateau, indicating that the seeding activity that we have in this sample in genetic patient and sporadics is the same. So we start with this project, and now we are here, July 2017, uh, and uh, at time zero, we enroll subject we, which voluntarily participate at the study. And uh, in, this, uh, in these subjects, which are asymptomatic, okay, because belong to this big Calabrian family, we collect OM brushing and uh, a blood withdrawal from these family members. 
The first group of patients that were in enrollment were 30, and a second group after six months were other 42. In other words, we collect 72 subjects uh, as yet. So the collection and the sample has been collected in blind. So if I get the olfactory brushing, I, I have a code, but I don't know who is referred to which patient. So to this sample, we did the PRP sequencing, and uh, we set up the experimental condition of the RT-Quick, because these are normal patients, so are not symptomatic, and we don't know the RT-Quick activity in these samples in this patient. So the original family, the family that we study is in the northern part of Italy, and uh, the original cluster was in Calabria, and after the Second World War, most of the people migrated in the north for reason of work, and uh, we went here in a small town where there is an hospital to collect uh, the samples. So this is an example of what we do to each patient, so uh, to each member, excuse me. The member arrived, uh, I informed the patient that uh, we, what we will do, so we will do in this procedure, which is the olfactory brushing. And I want to show you the procedure because it is absolutely non-traumatic, uh, uh, it doesn't create any uh, harmful for the patient. So we cover the mouth, and then uh, the ENT otolaryngologist cover with the shield a simple fiberscope, and uh, then the fiberscope is inserted into the lower part of the nose for inspection to see how the, the nasal cavity is, uh, is formed. You see here, here you see the, the nasal cavity, okay, whether there is, for example, a septum, correct, so it's easy to get in, just to see how to do it. And then you see a cotton schwab is inserted into the nose, in between, you see, this is the nasal septum, okay, and this is the turbinate, and uh, simply this cotton schwab is inserted in between and by simply rolling, this VAB are collectively olfactory neurons, which are in the nasal vault, directly in contact with the olfactory bulb, which is inside the brain. And then the Schwab is put in a tube, and we are ready to, to do the articuic on this sample. So the point is that it is easily performed, because we know that uh, we don't know a special train otolaryngologists to do this procedure because it is absolutely very simple, non-invasive, and uh, non-traumatic. Indicated that if we have to repeat another time the procedure, nobody say no because I had too much pain during the procedure. And it is highly efficient because with the simple sampling, we collect uh, around one million of cells with 300,000 are olfactory neurons, so it is a consistent amount. And it is highly sensitive, as I show you, because uh, in, the, in, the previous study, in the previous slide, I show you that uh, the amount of seeding activity that we have in the olfactory mucosa is much higher compared to the CSF. So this is the state of art, 72 subjects, 30 male, 42 female, with a mean age of 51. All except two underwent to olfactory brushing and a blood withdrawal for uh, genetic analysis, no complications were observed, and all the samples were suitable for RT-Quick assay. We already done the genetic study, and 21 are carriers of Yantr-K mutation, while 51 are normal, so they don't have the mutation. So first of all, we did an endpoint dilution of uh, an olfactory, bra an olfactory mucosa sample from a symptomatic patient. As you can see, we have to go down to one million dilution to have zero at RT quick. So it means that in the symptomatic patient, we have one million times more uh, uh, prions compared to the normal subjects. So we start now testing uh, using this condition 
the family members. As you can see, this is the positive control. After 10 hours, we have the peak of the Arctic while the sample from the family members we tested were all negative. So the question was to use an enhanced condition because probably in asymptomatic uh, carriers, we, we have to push the system. I mean, we have to improve uh, the sensitivity. As you can see, by changing the condition, that means changing the substrate of Arctic reaction and the temperature, after 10 hours, these are the controls, and this is the positive control, the, a patient with e 200 k you see that we have a, a, some kind of positivity. So we change again the condition, and uh, we use uh, a full-length PRP, the complete sequence, at 55 degrees, and you see that uh, after five hours, uh, the positive control is at the plateau, while all the controls that were studied were negative after 60 hours. So indicating that is strong the specificity of the test. Because the, the problem of, of the Arctic Week is that we have to be sure that if one sample turns out to be positive, we have to be sure that it is a true positivity. Because this is a, a, a striking thing that uh, we have to communicate to, to people. And uh, this is another example of another substrate because we, we did several experiments uh, to, to have uh, a plateau in the control, so where there is no false positive sample. And here we use a, another kind of prion protein from a rodent, which is a vol, at, five, at 55 degrees. And you see that the controls uh, after 20 hours come up. So this indicating that this is false positive and this kind of system is not uh, good for, for this uh, analysis. So the summary is that the endpoint dilution of OM patient from E200K at the standard condition, uh, thank you, was uh, 10, 1 million and using standard condition non-positive from LT patient were observed. We tested different Arctic experimental condition changing the substrate and the temperature and uh, uh, we have that uh, the best condition were using the full length PRP at uh, 55 degrees. This is what we are now. So the second part of the study after eight months you see we have to complete the analysis. So since we have established the experimental condition appropriate to, to test the olfactory brushing, now we are testing all the sample from the family member. And then we will cross the data from olfactory brushing with the genetics. Okay? Not yet, because we are working in blind. So after we have the complete analysis, there is the big question in case of a, a positive case what we have to do. If we start in a preventive therapy, for example, when they are doing with uh, uh, FFI, with doxycycline. So I'm finished here. This uh, uh, Maurizio Pacheri, Anna Ladogana, we designed the study, we prepared the study together. This is Anna Poleggi, who did the genetic study. Matilde Bongiani did the Arctic Week study. And these are the two otolaryngologists that came with us to the northern of Italy in sight uh, to do the nasal brushing. And I also thank, of course, the Coppan Diagnostics uh, who gave us for free the nasal tampon for doing the sampling, Byron Cohen and Giuseppe Legname for providing the recombinant protein. Thank you very much for your attention.